Historic levels of violence in Indianapolis. Last year, the city saw a record-breaking 271 homicides. An increase in violence has led to dramatic changes in the city's crime-fighting efforts. Over just the last few weeks, 35 new peacemakers started working to reduce violence. Box 59's Jesse Wells has a comprehensive look at how this program is hoping to save lives. Here on Warren Avenue, the sale of a gun from the trunk of a car quickly turned into an attempted robbery and shooting in January 2017. You know, I was shot and it was the closest that I had ever came to death. So for me, that was a, it was a chain breaker. Court records show Daniel Mallory recovered from his injuries and pleaded guilty to robbery before turning his life around and being hired as one of Indy's 35 new peacemakers. I was a part of the problem. And so now I want to be part of the solution. We're building trust and hope. The new peacemakers are not being paid for by the city county council. Instead, they're being funded using $37 million from the American Rescue Act over the next three years. The job titles have been divided into three areas, including street level violence interrupters, as well as outreach workers and long term life coaches. Those are credible messengers, right? So those individuals have um, either lived the life or have been a part of that lifestyle before and that have reformed. The goal to have 50 peacemakers by the end of the year is a big change from 2018 when at this public safety walk the mayor introduced the city's first two peacemakers. We had a very limited budget so we had a very limited staff. Of course even three years ago the idea of peacemakers was nothing new. The Indianapolis 10-point coalition began using ex-offenders as outreach workers in hotspot neighborhoods as far back as 1999. Cities that have what we call boots on the ground, street intervention initiatives do a better job of reducing violence. While Reverend Harrison's group currently receives only a fraction of the funding they saw in years past, he tells me he supports the city's expanded efforts. The more uh, peacemakers the city puts on the street, if they're very strategic about it, I think it will help. We've learned the new peacemakers will be paid between $51 and $58,000 a year and were trained by the National Institute for Criminal Justice Reform, which also helped develop Indy's violence reduction strategy. It's really about developing a trusting and positive relationship. David Muhammad says his group analyzed every shooting in Indianapolis over two years to determine what caused the violence and identify those most in need of intervention. This is a data-driven approach to reduce gun violence, so really understanding uh, why shootings occur. Using that data, but employing just a handful of peacemakers last year, the city claims they interrupted 773 acts of violence, stopping conflicts before they turned violent. After doing some digging on those numbers, I'm told last year the city tracked those interruptions by paper. Moving forward, the city plans to release digital monthly summaries, but because each individual report contains sensitive information, they won't be publicly available making it difficult to verify the exact count ourselves. You don't know if somebody's going to actually pull a trigger and you don't know how many times they're going to pull that trigger. Um, but we do know that we've engaged with those individuals and de-escalated the situation to where they didn't use a gun. Still, the city ended 2021 with a record 271 homicides and more than 700 non-fatal shootings. And everyone knows the success of the Peacemakers program will be judged on whether those numbers dramatically decrease over the next three years. Jesse Wells, Fox 59 News. Jesse, thank you. The program did run into an early stumble when one of the new violence interrupters, Jeff Walker, was arrested and charged last month with unlawful possession of a firearm and drug-related charges.